Today I'll be showing you how to install chain roll on a Case 4000 series corn head. First we're going to remove the three bolts on each residue knife using a 19 millimeter socket and impact. Be sure to save the three bolts from each residue knife as we'll need these later. After that, we'll remove three bolts on each stock roll knife using an 18 millimeter socket and impact. Using a large wrench or breaker bar, rotate the PTO shaft on the back of the corn head to gain access to the rest of the bolts on the stock roll plates. Continue to rotate the head and remove bolts on the stock roll plates until all plates are removed. Remove the shields on the front of each stock roll by using a 13 millimeter socket on each of the four bolts. Be sure to save the four bolts on the stock roll shields as we'll need them when we reinstall the shields. We're going to use the alignment tool to check the alignment on these shafts. As you can see, the nuts are not sitting down in the notches right there, so these shafts are slightly out of alignment. To fix this, we're going to remove these two nuts on each side, or loosen them rather, uh, so that we can fix the alignment and tighten it back up. We'll use a 19 millimeter wrench to loosen these nuts. You may need to use a second wrench on the back side. After aligning the shafts, tighten the four nuts. When installing 360 chain roll, you'll notice each plate has a number on it. The number is on the back of the plate, which will be facing the gearbox. You'll notice the plates are numbered L1 through 4 and R1 through 4. This denotes the left and right hand as well as the plate number. It's important to note that left and right hand is determined from the operator's seat. Some corn heads may require a spacer on the back of your chain roll plate for full intermeshing of the stock rolls. The way you'll determine this is installing one plate with the spacer and then rotating the head. We'll start by installing the L1 plate with a spacer by using a 10 millimeter Allen socket. You'll notice two different length bolts in your hardware kit. The shorter bolts with blue thread locker will be used on the single plates, while the longer bolts with yellow thread locker will be used on the double plates. R2 and L4. With the first plate and spacer installed, we're going to rotate the head to look for any contact between the chain roll plates and the row unit. 
If the chain roll plate does not contact the head at any point with a spacer installed, leave the spacer and install each following plate with a spacer behind it. If the chain roll plate contacts the row unit at any point, do not install the spacers. As you can see, this chain roll plate with a spacer is touching the bottom of the row unit below the deck plate. We will remove this plate and finish the install without the spacers. After removing the spacer, we'll reinstall the plate directly against the stock roll shaft. With the L1 plate installed, we'll install the R1 plate on the right hand stock roll according to the diagram on your instruction sheet. Torque each stock roll bolt to 100 foot-pounds. Rotate the stock roll shafts by turning the PTO shaft on the back of the corn head. Install the L2 plate according to the diagram in your instruction sheet. Next, we'll install the R2 plates. You'll notice a smaller plate labeled R2 and a larger plate labeled R2. Place the smaller plate on top of the larger one and use the yellow coated longer bolts to install. Rotate the head a little further to access the next face on the stock roll shafts. Continue the installation process by installing the L3 plate on the left hand stock roll. Continue the installation process with the R3 plate on the right hand stock roll. Rotate the head a little further to access the next face on the stock roll shafts. Next, we're going to install the L4 plates with the longer yellow coated bolts. Lastly, we're going to install the R4 plate on the right hand stock roll. After installing all the 360 chain roll plates, we'll install the 360 residue knives using the previously removed hardware.
Lastly, we'll reinstall the shields on the front of the stock rolls. After reinstalling the shields, your 360 chain roll installation is complete. You can repeat this process on all other rows.